This is a short demonstration video looking at some of the characteristics of elemental sulfur. Sulfur is a non-metal and the 16th element found in a periodic table. In our first demonstration we have poured out some sulfur onto a fire brick and we're going to show sulfur burning in air. So we used a blowtorch to ignite the sulfur which easily ignites and as the sulfur reacts with oxygen the products of combustion are sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. These are very noxious, harmful gases that you do not want to breathe in. As sulfur has a relatively low melting point of approximately 115 degrees Celsius, you can see some of the sulfur melting as the surrounding sulfur is burning. And the burning sulfur is burning with a characteristic blue flame. In our second demonstration, to show the reactivity of some of that noxious sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide gas which is formed when sulfur is burnt in air, we have loaded a test tube with some sulfur powder which we are heating with a blowtorch. At the neck of the test tube we are holding some moist litmus paper moistened in water hence the original green color with green being a neutral pH of around 7 which is what you would expect for water. As the produced sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide gas flows over the moist litmus paper there is a reaction with the water in the litmus paper forming an acid. The acid which is formed is sulfuric acid, turning the litmus paper red. And looking at a color chart confirms that a red color has a very low pH of around 1, which is acidic. In our third and final demonstration, we are going to show a unique property of elemental sulfur to form plastic sulfur. As you can see we have a large quantity of sulfur that we are heating in a test tube. Whilst this is heating we need to discuss some of the allotropes of sulfur. When an element is said to have allotropes it is one way of saying that that element can arrange its atoms in various structures. For example carbon has a number of allotropes. We are commonly aware of diamond and graphite. Sulfur is very unique when it comes to allotropes, as no element is known to be able to form more allotropes than sulfur. Today we know of at least 30 different ways in which sulfur can arrange its atoms to form 30 different allotropes, or effectively 30 different materials based on elemental sulfur. As we heat sulfur, we can see a number of color changes that are taking place. These color changes correspond to different forms of sulfur. The form of sulfur that we started with was rhombic sulfur. This was the yellow powdery sulfur, sometimes referred to as flowers of sulfur. This rhombic sulfur is the most stable form of sulfur under normal conditions of pressure and temperature. So once we have melted our sulfur and taken it near to the boiling point, we now quench this in water and the rapid cooling freezes the sulfur into an amorphous state. So to get to this amorphous state of sulfur, we've started with rhombic sulfur, which is the yellow form. We've heated it. This has melted the sulfur. As we continue to supply heat energy, the melt starts to form sulfur rings. Further heating then breaks these rings into chains. These chains when formed can tangle or join. So not surprisingly there will be a viscosity change of the molten sulfur with temperature. Then as we continue to heat the sulfur close to its boiling point these chains start to break. Then when we pour the sulfur rapidly into water we rapidly cool it effectively locking the structure. Given enough time, the sulfur will revert back to rhombic sulfur as this is the most stable state at normal temperature and pressure. When we remove the sulfur from the water and pull it between our fingers, you can see it has a chewing gum or rubber-like consistency. Although sulfur has almost zero solubility in water, I still wouldn't recommend chewing this. This video has shown some of the basic properties of elemental sulfur, but sulfur is found in everyday life. We use it in batteries as an electrolyte, for example, sulfuric acid is used in car batteries. Sulfur is used in pesticides. 
and sulfur can be found as the eighth most abundant element in the human body. So basically, we need sulfur to survive. And as always, please subscribe and thanks for watching.